lives. What are lives? Well, you see, all the way back at the beginning, on the very first day, God said, I can't see. They have been a mechanic around since the arcade days to give you limited chances before you need to pay another quarter. It's how the games made their money. For many home consoles, is a way to extend the length of the game, since many of them probably could last only about 30 minutes, maybe an hour if you're being generous. But as time went on, lives have become much less relevant. The games have gotten way longer, so restarting you all the way back at the beginning isn't really a viable option. So now there's two sides of the mechanic. Either it's completely inconsequential where it's more of a minor annoyance or it puts you so far back it could be demoralizing to continue. I remember playing the second act of the final zone in Sonic Mania, got a game over and had to start all the way back in act one again. Didn't really feel like playing anymore after that. And then there's the other thing where many games that do have lives sometimes just like to shower you in them. Make me question why they're even here at all. Hell, many Mario games have intentional infinite lives tricks on the second level making it even more baffling. <laughs> Many games nowadays have find more effective ways to punish players for dying. In games like Shovel Knight, Mario Odyssey, and Kirby and the Forgotten Charity donations, you now lose coins or money as an actual punishment since you kind of need those things to be able to purchase stuff in shops. But it's also not the end of the world since the game is still more unplayable without that stuff anyway. I would like to buy a new costume in Mario Odyssey, but you know, I don't have to. And that's the stock of platformers. There's plenty of other games that go about punishing the player for dying in their own unique ways. But some games really like to hold on to this mechanic for whatever reason. They just can't let it go. Which kind of brings me to Mario Wonder. Now you might think it's kind of weird that I'm kind of looking at this game and calling it a unique and weird flaw, considering that the live system isn't really any different than any other 2D Mario game. But the thing about Mario Wonder is that they both get rid of old systems and mechanics that aren't relevant anymore, as well as introducing new things that could potentially act as a replacement for lies, but they only kind of like go halfway. In terms of the other mechanics they got rid of, the timer. That's always been in every 2D Mario game and they finally got rid of it, probably because there was no real reason to keep it why rush players along. They also tend to be so long and lenient it might as well not even be there. Hmm, this sounds awfully familiar. The only time it was really relevant was in New Super Luigi U, with the 100 second time limit, and the levels were designed in a way that was meant to be rushed through. They also got rid of the point system, probably because no one actually even cared or paid attention to it. Since they got rid of those two staples in the series, it's interesting that they didn't get rid of lives as well, since it's very similar to the other two outdated systems. But maybe it's because they thought it was too intrinsically tied to the design of these games. And by that, I'm talking about the coins. These things are scattered everywhere. There are rewards for exploration, taking more dangerous routes, performing impressive actions. They encourage the players to interact with stages on a deeper, more interesting level, rather than just get past the obstacle. They're just too baked into the actual level design to just get rid of. And since their only real purpose is to give extra lives, the lives have to stay too. Here's the part that gets weird though. Mario Wonder has a solution to this problem. The purple coins. These are a separate currency that can be collected throughout the game, and unlike the gold coins, are used to purchase various things in the shop, like standees, badges, uh, extra lives, Sometimes you'll need to use them to unlock a path forward, so there's actual useful incentive to pick these up. So... Why are regular coins still here? If you have these separate other coins that collecting has more meaning to them, why not just have all the coins be purple coins and just get rid of the lives entirely? One could make the argument was for multiplayer purposes, lives are shared in multiplayer. If you die, everyone loses a life, so it might discourage brute forcing through a level, but that can't be it because you only lose a life if you don't get revived in time. So if someone forges ahead and you manage to catch up to them, there's just no consequences. To me, it just seems like they're here because they're just too much of a Mario staple. They probably just felt they were too integral. I mean, just look at this green mushroom thing. It's iconic. But the problem is that since they still function the way they do, they're still pretty much pointless. Gold coins aren't really all that rewarding to find. I think this clip from King of Skill showcases what I mean here. There we go. What's up here? Okay, then how would I fix this? Well, I would just get rid of them. Okay, okay, I'm not gonna end it there. That's kind of boring, isn't it? Like, nothing I said was really anything new. I was just kind of regurgitating critiques that many have already had before, because I'm an uncreative hack. Get it? That was funny, wasn't it? Don't you like how self-aware I am? Who the fuck is that? 
So let's do something more interesting. Let's keep the lives in the game and try to make them more valuable and fun. Something that really adds to the gameplay in some way. The first idea I had was maybe that you can make it some sort of achievement thing. While doing research for my Kirby Star Allies review, there's an interview with the developers and Kumazaki said how the lives were basically kept in less as an actual live system and more as of a reach a high score sort of deal. You even get a little crown on Kirby if you do. How cute. So why not do something similar where you have achievements in the game and reaching a certain amount of lives is just one of the ones you can get. Maybe even reward you with purple coins and make it an actual incentive rather than just to check a box off the list. But eh, I don't know. That seems a little cheap, doesn't it? It's something that really only matters if you're going for 100% completion. If that's not really your thing, lives would still be rather worthless. I mean, that argument can already be kind of made for the standees. The only real reason to collect purple coins is for the standees, but if you don't care about getting them all or just don't play multiplayer, they're rather useless. The only thing to use them after that is the badges, which aren't all that expensive. In Mario Odyssey, there's a shop that has costumes and stickers to use to decorate your ship. It made it where even if you don't want to 100% complete the game, you'd still have use for the coins collected because it's just fun to have Mario wear different outfits. Now for Mario Wonder, I can kind of understand why costumes might be out of the question. There's plenty of different characters in the game with different body types. Uh, you'd have to get them all look right with the more robust fluid animations they all have. How would they look with different power-ups like when you're big, small, elephant, drill, fire, bill? Bill? bubble, but I like the idea of the decorations for like a small hub to stylize. It would be pretty cool. And since this game has an online function, it would be fun to go around and look at other people's rooms and see how they decorated them. It would be like Kirby's Epic Yarn. You know, they have something similar there. It seems like I kind of went off topic, but it slides right into my next idea for the lives. The idea being that you could trade extra lives for purple coins. I think that'd be an interesting mechanic. You could put yourself closer to the risk of getting a game over for the sake of extra coins to spend at the shop. Not only that, but even if the game over still aren't that much of a threat, then it would still be exciting to get one-ups because that's just extra purple coins for you to spend in the shop. Thing is, I also understand this is not an all-encompassing solution. Many people probably just really don't care about decorating a room that doesn't really connect to the rest of the game. Like, does anyone actually use the lockers in Splatoon 3 anymore? I did have another idea that wouldn't really work for Mario because it's just too structurally different, but anytime you enter a level, you'd always have a max of three lives. If you got hit or fell in a pit, you'd die, but you'd start pretty much right well you were. You could collect coins and get more lives to make the level easier if you get hit or fall in more pits. And if you lose all your lives, then you restart at the beginning of the level. I thought this sounded interesting before I came to the realization that this is just hit points but with extra steps, so yeah, I probably wouldn't do that one. Yeah, I kind of recognize that none of my ideas here are like 100% airtight solutions. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if someone was watching this video and was disappointed with all the ideas that I laid out because, well, everyone plays games differently and have their own views on what's worth their time and worth engaging with. But it does make listening to others and their ideas super interesting. Like maybe that person will have an idea on their own that I never even considered just because of how differently we enjoy our games. I just love hearing ideas from other people. I find that discussion fun and interesting. But if I had to pick one option on what to do with the lives, I would probably just get rid of them. <laughs>